Hello and welcome back everyone to Adobe Live from the Sofa in the UK. I hope you all had a nice Easter weekend. Today we have Mikiko here. Hi Mikiko, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Where are you based? Uh, I'm in London right now. As yeah. well, yeah, cool. Yeah. And of course we have Rufus who brought Adobe Live um, to the UK. Hi Rufus. Hey everyone, hello to everyone in the chat. There's so many people here already. Oh, Ian. Ian is here, Sarah, Jack, Tanya, Sandrine, Anthony, Anthony, sorry. Like I, I read a French name and then an English name. No, it just com comes out all wrong. But hi there. And uh, thanks for all of you to all of you who have joined us yesterday on Easter Monday. Yes, because these streams are daily. We are here every day. Um, this is actually our third week of these streams with UK artists. And uh, we're here every day from noon to one uh, UK time. Um, yes, to give you inspiration, to show you what other artists or creatives are doing uh, around the UK. And with that, we hope to be together a little bit, to share some time and some insight. And, you know, of course, the, um, the very cool thing about these live streams is that you can ask artists, just like Mikiko, uh, questions in real time right here in the chat on uh, behance.net slash live. All right, so if you're watching this on YouTube, scoot over to behance.net slash live and join the conversation. And Mikiko, it's so great to see you again. We've had you on the German streams for, uh, for a couple of times, but then I thought, wow, but Mikiko is in London. She's a UK artist and she does some really cool stuff. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, to chatting with you today and, uh, Maybe you can give a quick introduction of who you are, what you do, and why are you in London? Sure. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm half Japanese, half German, which is why I lived in Germany for a long time and I was very active in the German scene. Um, but I grew up internationally, so most of my work has been online in English. And uh, in 2016, I moved to London because, well, it's, it's a... It's a very creative place compared to where I was in Germany before. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, I've been mainly working uh, in manga and anime uh, in the genre of, of manga and anime in Germany because there's a huge community there and a huge uh, industry of self-published uh, and smaller indie published manga. And, uh, and since I got quite a good success online, uh, I've been freelancing for the past, I don't know, 13 years or so and um, I didn't really rely on my location so London just seemed a great place to go and uh, I got an opportunity to flat share and then I just went over here <laughs> and it's been great it's been great I still travel around um, Germany as well as I do now much more in the UK of course not right now but <laughs> uh, yep. but yeah so the, so essentially that's it I've done some manga anime work um, I've done some game artwork like uh, I've, I've done some covers for Nintendo I've done some workshops here and there I've worked for Apple and Wacom and people like that and but for the most part I self-publish my own books and and I have a web comic called Mickey's mini comics which is one of my most famous pieces I guess yeah and if it's not that then I generally love to play D&D &D and I draw a lot of character artwork so like character designs and character building world building yeah do you have a do you have a website or an Instagram that you would like to share where people can actually find you and maybe continue the conversation with you you are on our uh, no well yeah you are on the German discord but Maybe yes. On yeah, yeah, no. Well, I didn't <laughs> want to mention Discord, but yeah, it, it exists. Yeah, let's yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about Discord another time. Yeah, yeah. I I do have a website where I link everything else, so it's just Mikiko dot art. That's M I K I K O dot art, like art. And mm -hmm. uh, I have Instagram. I have Twitter. Those are probably the places I check most. I'm not very like talkative because I'm working most of the time, but I do read everything that. Uh, is written to me. Um, I also have a DeviantArt and uh, a couple of shops. Like I've got a physical shop, but that's closed because I can't ship anything right now. Um, and I have a digital download shop where I have all my comics as like books uh, that you can just download. And um, hmm. yeah, so. And all of much. that you can find under mikiko.art. Yes, it's all linked there. So you, you also have like a, 
a, a little overview of some of the works I've done and then everything else is just links so <laughs> you should be you should be able to find everything you need <laughs> and I know for example that um, that you typically don't take commissions you do your own thing right or how does that work uh, yeah so because of the situation currently I did have to open commissions but they are exclusive currently to patreon mm. um, so I didn't do them before because I tend to get over like completely overrun within the shortest amount of time so I've just limited it to patreon so that my like my closest fans my biggest supporters they get the first dibs and uh, I have a I have a waiting list that's at least 10 people right now so <laughs> even that didn't like it's still quite a lot of work so that's what I'm working on mostly right now <laughs> Yeah. So how did you get into manga drawing? Um, I guess it's um, it's it's kind of interesting. I I used to travel around a lot as a child, um, so I had a hard time making friends and sort of you know finding something like my group. Um, but culturally, I always I grew up Japanese because my mother was always home, and uh, and she taught us Japanese reading and writing and all these things, and um, manga was just fascinating to me because it was I guess it was a piece of home you know and so whenever we went back to Japan I would grab as many manga as I could and then read them when we were out somewhere else so I, I've lived in Hong Kong and Germany Belgium um, and we've traveled everywhere pretty much and it was kind of like art and manga was my connection to home because like a lot of Japanese culture is in manga and it meant something to me. So it wasn't just a cool thing that comes from far away. It was actually home, you know. So that's probably a big reason. <laughs> so have you been doing it as a child already? Yeah, I think so. Um, I remember that even when I first started drawing, I, I drew like dinosaurs quite a lot. <laughs> they still had cartoony faces, like they had cartoony eyes and and they were quite big eyes and, and I, I read manga but I couldn't define it as a genre because I was too small to really understand that it's a genre or a different type of thing so to me it was just it was just normal so yeah I think so I think around 12 when I was 12 I think I, I realized it's different from like western comics like I, I saw asterisks and and I realized it's very different yeah <laughs> Mm -hmm. Cool. And was, what, what was your education? Um, so in terms of art, I am actually self-taught. So I've never gone to any art schools. Um, I get a lot of requests about people going, oh, what should I do for art studying? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really can't help you. Um, but yeah, so at the time where I finished school, so I went to um, gymnasium in Germany, which is 30, at the time it was 13 years of normal school. Um, I, I still don't know the system in the UK. I don't understand what the equivalent is. I'm sorry, it, I can't. It's, it's just doing A levels. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. so I did that, and after that, it was like, okay, do I go to university? And in Germany, there was nothing um, that was interesting to me. So there was graphic design, which is not what I wanted, or gal like classic art, which. I thought was interesting until I realized that it isn't. <laughs> so I wanted to learn how to technically draw well, but they were teaching how to be like deep and, you know, like artistic. And that was completely not what I wanted. So I just, I actually applied anyway and I got rejected. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't go to art school of any kind. And I just, uh, so the internet is really my school. Um, so I just went online and I was very, I think I was pretty resourceful. I went everywhere. Back then there were loads of websites with professional concept artists. Even though I didn't do concept arts, I, I just looked at what they do, tried to learn from that. I looked up tutorials on YouTube, on, I don't know, DeviantArt has a lot of resources and I just pieced it together myself. I'm pretty sure it, would, it took me longer than if you'd go to an actual art school like if you know you want to do game art and you go to game art school then 
I'm sure you'll get there faster than it took me. But at the time, that I just didn't have the option. So, so I just didn't wait, waste time. I just went online. Mm. I put my things out. I got critique. I approached artists as well. That was one of the biggest ways of learning for me is um, talking to artists directly and asking questions. If I didn't understand the tutorials, I could just go, well, I tried this and it doesn't work. <laughs> Why doesn't it work on my art? You know, mm -hmm. And people were incredibly kind and helpful. And um, and streams like these also, because like at some point streams became popular and it made it much easier to just pop into somebody's stream as they're working and go, why, why did you do that? Or why do you use that tool? Or should I try this? Should I try that? And you get a direct answer. So, yeah. We have Jonathan asking, what's the difference between manga and anime? Or is, is it the same? So manga is just the, the drawn form, the 2D form on paper. Um, well, actually, anime is also 2D, I suppose. <laughs> but anime <laughs> is the animated version. So you just that's in the word. Anime is just uh, the short. It's just shortened for animation. Um, Japanese love shortening a lot of words. Like personal computer is not PC. It's pasokom. So like they just like shortening things. So animation is anime, and a pocket monster is Pokemon, right? So these things are just, it's just how the word came about. Um, so yeah, anime, I think a lot of people use the words interchangeably, but if you're being, you know, specific, then manga is drawn and static, anime is the- I did not moving. know that about pocket <laughs> monsters. Yeah. Now, now it just makes <laughs> Yeah, because they're small you put sense. them in your pocket, yeah. <laughs> everything makes sense now. <laughs> That's right. And, and, yeah, and Tanya says, I have read your comic on Webtoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. really upload a lot on Webtoons, unfortunately. I have mm -hmm. to keep doing that. I I started uh, uploading them on Tapas. Um, they used to be called Tapastic, and now it's Tapas. And I couldn't manage too many accounts. So I just I finished the one on Tapas. So I have to next upload the rest on webtoons so mm. there's only like a couple of episodes on webtoons you can find all the rest on through my website again because i have web comics separately listed you can find them all so there's a lot of episodes mm. <laughs> and i think everything. we should i think i think we should switch to your photoshop and look okay. at that beautiful picture that you have sure, there, sure there's one question from angus he's saying mikiko how long did it take you to get this good <laughs> well um Oh, it's hard to say, isn't it? Like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, like if, if you if you're if you draw a lot and you draw all your life, then eventually it's inevitable. It, re it really depends on how much help you get and stuff. And it was a bit messy for me. So I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm currently um, 36. So it took me quite a long time to get this good, I would say. Um, because I never stopped drawing. Like a lot of children, when when they play with crayons, they draw very small. Like since they're small, but then eventually they just stop or take a break, and then maybe at some point they decide, okay, I want to draw again. So there's a huge gap, and I didn't have that gap. So it's really time you put into it. So yeah, many years. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> can we see your screen already? Yeah, we can see yeah. the screen. Okay, so yeah, this is just one of the bigger pieces I've made. Um, whenever I've gone on um, Adobe Life in, in the German uh, version, <laughs> I always draw like the smallest, easiest, simplest things because we're we're limited in time and and uh, it's kind of fun to talk as well. And I'm really bad at multitasking, so I decided I wanted to show you some of the stuff that I create that takes me weeks to make <laughs> because you you wouldn't see it otherwise. So this is just one that took me a very long time. It's obviously, it's it's D and D. So Dungeons and Dragons, my biggest hobby. And this is like a group picture I drew for my group. Um, hmm. But I will not be drawing something like this today either. So hmm. I'm probably gonna revert back to very yeah. simple stuff. But yeah, it's like worth talking about this huge piece, like Sarah's asking how many hours of work is this huge piece? So I, I think it took me quite a long time because um, I got stuck with the lighting at one point and I always draw these things in my free time. So it, it must have been like uh, three weeks on and off, but not full, like I wasn't drawing 
only this piece for three weeks. It was more like whenever I have free time in the evenings, on the weekends and stuff. So I suppose I suppose like one to two weeks is is like working comfortably one to two weeks. So not five days a week sort of thing, maybe roughly for this, because I'm not doing this very and, and, frequently. And which one which which one is you? Oh yeah, so so um, can you actually see my cursor? Yeah. Oh, this one's me. <laughs> this this lady with the shield. Ah. So yeah. <laughs> and and you have a wolf. Um no, she, no. the wolf actually killed ah. me at one point. <laughs> so ah, okay. the, um so so this image is just a lot of things that we've experienced. Mm -hmm. So the wolves are there because it was the reason I died the first time. Mm -hmm. And then the lady on top of the roses was like a succubus who, who mm -hmm. tried to ensnare us. And uh, the cloaked figures were this this cult that we battled and all sorts. So th these are all bits of the story that are kind of, you know, integrated in the image. Um, yeah, it's it's a fun group. I've been playing with them for about two years now, maybe three. So mm -hmm. a lot of stories have, have come about. <laughs> nice. And you yeah. did that in Photoshop? So this is mixed. So a lot of my work is actually um, pretty much half-half. Photoshop, I do all of the editing, the adjusting, the light, um, like the color management, all of that I do in Photoshop. Um, and it's my preferred method as well. But I have some of my most favorite, like my favorite brushes are in Clip Studio Paint. So I do a lot of line work in Clip and some of the detailed, like, um, let me just zoom in. So you can, you can see some of the softer um, transitions around the clothes, for example, the hair. Um, I quite like using a very soft uh, watercolor brush on on in clip as well. So those those softer lines are done generally elsewhere, and then I do a lot of like anything cutting out and rearranging. I prefer doing that in Photoshop. Um, yeah, as I said, color tweaks and and such mm. as well. Um, and of course, the liquify tool is my biggest friend. <laughs> so so yeah, it's it's quite mixed. Um, uh, it's another reason why I end up doing a lot of the chibi artwork which i'll show you as well um mm -hmm. on the streams is because that is something i can do 100 percent in photoshop without having to switch so yeah ray is asking if you design an ipad as well um i do have an ipad but i don't work on it very frequently because i i have a workstation that is quite huge and I've got a huge <laughs> Cintiq that I don't really need to switch to the small iPad. This is a 27 inch Cintiq and um, it's very comfortable. So <laughs> I have no reason. I don't really work while I travel. So the only times I, I do use the iPad is when I have to go somewhere and I really want to sketch. I don't bring sketchbooks anymore. I just bring the iPad. Um, it's just lighter than bringing heavy books and paper and, and pens and all sorts of things. So it's just, yeah, but this is my preferred method. <laughs> it's, it's a big uh, PC as well. I've had it for almost 10 years and it's still still pretty strong. So that's where most of my funds go to like <laughs> PC building and yeah. So let me just click through a couple. So this is another quite detailed piece. I like this effect of the light was definitely not possible in the other software. So this is definitely done in Photoshop um, just because I can't tweak these things very easily and very comfortably elsewhere. So this one, I'm also, I think this one I also took like a, a week or a week and a half. Um, and then these are more simple pieces are just characters. This is pretty easy. I, I didn't spend much time on this, maybe two days on and off again, like after work hours. <laughs> uh, so pretty much all of this is personal stuff because um, I find that um, this is the stuff people want to see. Like I have a couple of professional things, but they're not, not that fun. <laughs> I find I, I like showing off these pieces. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I also have this, which is some might recognize the style. This is the mini comics. Um, just because all of the other artwork, a lot of people don't know that I make that because they read these and they know me for this. Um, but I am in fact the same artist. <laughs> so, How do you come up with these stories? 
Um, so these are all real life stories. So they're just moments in, in my life where I thought, this is so silly. Okay, let's draw it. Um, it started off as, as gifts for my friends um, because they would do something silly. And I think like as a gift, it, it's really great to just draw them something instead of buying them something. And it became so popular online that I essentially, I couldn't stop doing them because it would be silly to stop. And um, so this is my cat and she is around here somewhere. <laughs> um, she is real and she does this as well. <laughs> Oh, she's. Oh, there she is. Okay, I don't think I don't know if I can is actually she, show you. Is she? Well, let's... Is she in the fat? <laughs> there she is. So that's her. <laughs> and she's she's in my comics quite frequently because she she does silly little things like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And uh, yeah, and th this is an example of a character sheet. And I was thinking of either drawing a character in more detail today, uh, which is this fellow. So you can see it's unfinished. Uh, I left it unfinished so we can choose what, what we'd like to see done. Um, so I'm going to put all of these together into a similar character sheet as you saw before. Or alternative, we'll stick to something simple. I'll be able to talk more. <laughs> and these are emojis that. Um, uh, uh, a patron requested some emojis of my character that you saw earlier, which is this character, um, where she still had long hair. And uh, she wanted to use these in a chat to sort of, you know, show some emotions. So so these are pretty simple and easy to do. So. <laughs> Ka Caroline is asking, do you sketch on paper first or straight into Photoshop? Um, I used to sketch on paper first however i um i did get rid of that habit um in the last five years or so slowly gradually because i'm running out of space to store the paper and uh, i also have this huge tablet now it's become much easier to actually just sketch directly into like photoshop or clip studio and um and nowadays i don't sketch on paper anymore except if i unless I'm um, drawing commissions at a at an event. So I, I sometimes do sketch commissions at an event, um, but it's quite rare. So. <laughs> and yeah. Angus is asking, how do you feel generally about the portrayal of female characters in fantasy art? Um, I don't really feel one way or the other. I don't get easily bothered by anything anyway, but I also don't think I consume enough other stuff to get annoyed. <laughs> like I'm I'm quite busy doing my own things anyway that it doesn't really occur to me much. Um and I'm I'm kind of the type to to just say well to each their own. There is an audience for that and that's fine. Sometimes people are just into it without having, you know, evil intentions in my opinion. And um yeah. So I just draw what I like and people like it and that's fine, you know. I wouldn't want other people to to be forced to draw something else if if it's what they like to draw. And Robert is, is asking, are there your guitars behind you? Oh, some of them. Uh, two two of them are mine. One one electric guitar and one bass is mine, and the the double bass and the other bass are my partners. <laughs> so I haven't played, played in a long it? while. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I do I I did play for a while, but um, not very well. Um, I I drew a, a a manga about punk rock and metal, and that's around the time where I bought them, and I learned to play to be able to draw them better, and I I learned a lot from it. <laughs> and, um, um, but I haven't really been been playing a lot recently. I should really get into it. You'd think I'd have way more time now, but it's not always the case. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you get your inspirations from at the moment? Your cat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, cat and my friends. So I, I do, um, I talk to them very re regularly. So I, I game a lot. So I play video games and I play D&D. &D, so it's almost daily that I talk to somebody via 
you know, voice chat in some way. Um, and for these mini comics, it's definitely just people. I meet people, I listen to their stories. I have just very silly friends that do silly things. And it it's sometimes it's really simple. You can make a joke out of anything um, that your friends do. Right? <laughs> like if you've got some silly friends, you'll know what I mean. Or pets, you know, very easy. Um, when it comes to um, more serious things, I suppose, um, I find, again, I find people very interesting. And my work is very much character centric. So it focuses very much on the character and their motivations. And I, I just like, uh, like watching and understanding how people work and why they make decisions like they do. And there's just really interesting people out there that are very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And, and um, yeah, it's, it's hard to explain, but something simple like, like human kindness, I think, especially now we see that a lot as well, people helping each other um, f for, you know, no reason other than because they want to. Um, that kind of stuff, I think, is gives me a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting because we had Radim yesterday, and uh, you know he's in he's in in branding and uh, you know doing packaging designs and you know creating brands for companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know somebody in the chat asked, you know, uh, where do you get inspiration? Do you go to museums? Do do this? Do that? And I said, no, actually, I just go out and watch people because the people are inspiring me. And you're the second one this week that says this sort of thing, and it's kind of, kind of nice uh, <laughs> that no, that 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 we, that we depend on people in the end. We're human, even you know, like, even somebody who's like, how do, how do you say, um, introverted like me, um, I miss people, <laughs> like real people. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. I like I never realized that I do go out more than I thought you know um and once you're not allowed you suddenly realize oh yeah i usually go out and you know meet my friends once every month at least um yeah and then other things that you just you get exposed to normal things outside that you don't get anymore and then you realize oh, you really miss it so I'm, I'm super grateful that i have the internet <laughs> i think a lot of us would be quite quite lost without it and being able to just call up our well friends we we wouldn't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> that's right yeah i was i was always thinking like had this happened like 20 years ago you know yeah how would I, yeah it would, we would have had to cope in a completely different way yeah, yeah. you had to like get like telephone cards and mm -hmm. you can't even go out to buy them anymore so <laughs> no yeah i i can see you have uh, some layers there do you usually work in layers or what's your usual process yeah i do i do work in layers um especially with stuff quite simple like this it's i can just uh, turn them off to show you is this so this is i never late name them because i'm i'm lazy and i know <laughs> what it is um so this is line work this is color so let's just do that okay so so it's pretty straightforward the line work goes in the middle then you just have the coloring below this is just because i was trying to i was uh, eye dropping from a separate picture and i wanted the same colors um so this one's tattoo this one's shadow color and then i think this is just the sketch yeah let me just oops so that's the original sketch before the ink work as you can see, I changed a few things. <laughs> I moved yeah. her head because it was too, like she was doing that. And uh, I wanted it to loosen up a little bit forward. So I do a lot of posing when I draw these things. I'm like, that doesn't look right. It, like, this doesn't look angry. This looks more angry, like, right? So you do that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so this was, because I had forgotten the dragon. I had to do separate sketch for the dragon. And you can see I'm I'm very uh, rough when it comes to sketches. The the girl is fairly clean, but the dragon isn't because I was I think I was streaming, so I was like talking and just polishing the sketches as I was talking when I normally don't. But this is more usual stuff because I sketch very roughly and then pretty much ink very cleanly directly on it. Um, 
uh, into clean inks because um, um, well manga and manga style stuff as long as it's not more complicated than ink shades hmm. it's pretty straightforward so I've just got a hand for it now um, and it's very simple style like this for all the other stuff I showed you earlier I definitely have to do more refining so yeah and Does then the dragon finally, have a meaning? Um, it's just her pet. So she just mm -hmm. always has a pet. And the reason I included it is because um, her character design is, is interesting, but only if you see her full body. Because she has like red trousers, which is a huge part of her look. But if it's without the dragon um, and you only show her up to her waist, she just she's just wearing brown leathers and it looks really boring. So I added the dragon because he's just as red as her trousers and it gives like this real good pop of color right in there. So that's why I included him. <laughs> Interesting. But it doesn't have a meaning in Japanese culture or anything like that. Oh, um, well, we do have dragons in culture, um, but it's very different because this one is more of a Western style dragon. Um, so in Japanese culture, dragons represent uh, like the element of water. So usually associated with rivers or the ocean and like a, a force of nature of a similar sort. Um, I'm pretty sure I've heard of them also flying in the clouds because of rain and storm and lightning. So they're like storm gods of some sort, um, but they're very much like a nature element. So they're like more like spirits of, of nature rather than anything else. So, and uh, yeah. The, the, they're kind of neutral, like um, they're supposed to be wise, but they can be angered. So if you don't, you know, if you're not respectful, you might get in trouble, but they wouldn't necessarily like destroy a village like they do in the medieval times in, in the West. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like dragons. They're quite cute. Jonathan is asking, can you show us your brush setup for doing the outline? Um, so here the brush was indeed done in Clip Studio earlier. Um, I had a chat with Rufus about what to do and I had this done halfway. So if you're interested, I don't know if I'm if it's okay to show Clip Studio, I could show you why the, I use those brushes, but I don't know <laughs> if that's okay. Um, but in I guess in Photoshop, if I do use the brush here, it would be just the, the normal hard round brush with the pressure, like just this brush. I don't really use a lot of custom brushes because I find that the standard ones and the ones that come with, with Photoshop are perfectly fine. I think- But, but you, you, can, you can actually absolutely show the other application. Also maybe talk a little okay. bit about what, what is it that you find there that you're missing in Photoshop and you know what the difference is. Oh yeah, okay, that would be good. Um, let me just open it up. And I'll just open up a, a new piece. Uh, let's do a new file. Sure. All right. So, so Clip Studio. The one thing I really love about it is the way it does the brushes. And I don't really use it for much else. Um, and it could also be it could also be that I don't know about new features in Photoshop, which is why I've just been doing this and uh, it's totally unnecessary but we'll find out because you guys can probably tell me so this is the ink brush that I use I like the the G pen or the mapping pen I'll show you they're slightly different but it's hard to describe because a lot of it is in the feel um, and the, the reason I like them is because um, Clip Studio is actually a originally a manga software so like manga making software it's made specifically to to create manga and so these ink brushes are are replicating specific manga ink pens which I, I have in my drawers but I'm not gonna dig out but these are called like G pen mapping pen turnip pens these are all like pen tips that you can actually physically buy um, and they're they're replicating the same feeling and I find that like sketching in them is incredibly smooth and it they have a stabilizer that's also like even without a stabilizer it still feels hmm, like sharp I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure how to explain it and 
I don't even use the, 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 the pencil tool that much, but it's really just the ink tools. So the ink tools are great. And the other thing I really like is the, the watercolor tool. So I use the opaque watercolor all the time. And it has like these effects where it's really, really easy to, to blend very softly. And it, yeah. it has like this way of doing it very naturally. So my issue with um, some of the Photoshop brushes is that I have to I have to sample and go back and forth way, way more. So like here, it's very hard to, I haven't actually set my things correctly. <laughs> Let me just do the settings. Where are the settings? Uh, where are they? So it's just. I don't know what it is. I, it's it's really hard to describe because I never really had to explain why I use it. Okay, no, <laughs> and you don't have it's to like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like close up, it doesn't look that great. But if you actually go into detail like this, it's it's very quick and smooth, and it has a a character that I like. I don't know, um, and it it automatically blends it very well as well. Like it's if you add another color, it's not. It feels a lot more like actual color, I suppose. It looks very much like the fresco that Octavia showed. Yeah, yeah, I was I was very excited about fresco because it reminded me of this, but I haven't really gotten around to using it yet. Um, again, creature of habit, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are just the big reasons, and um, like, yeah. So they also have. Um, vector that you can draw directly so these this is all stuff that i think fresco can do as well and clip studio has been doing this for a while already so these were the big reasons why i, I had learned how to use this so yeah so so my my most used pen is the ink pen the g g pen actually the g pen and the uh, opaque watercolor and finally the blend blur as well so how do you move it into Photoshop? Um, it, it saves as PSDs, and then I just oh. uh, save and transfer, and that's it, pretty much. Cool. Yeah, it's it's very easy to use. Um, and uh, it, it has a lot of other things that, again, I don't really use. <laughs> I have like my set of things, which is the editing, and then the inking, and then the coloring. And that's, that's all I use. And I don't really do much of uh, other things they have like they have 3d modeling stuff which i'm like oh no no i've got my 3d modeling figures i don't i don't need <laughs> software for that i'll just pose my little figurine that'll be fine you know and that's that's generally how it goes for me then um i tend to only only really pick up something new when i realize that it's either way too good and i i, I really need it because i don't have any way of doing it with what I currently have, or um, something's getting out of date, and I have to really, really learn something because <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> I'll lose it. Um, so yeah. Munir was asking earlier: Are you familiar with surreal draw like S Sakimi Chan style? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Oh, um, I know Sakimi Chan, but I don't know what what he meant by what what do i know about her um like if yeah if you are familiar with the surreal draw style oh right right um yeah uh yeah i know i know her style and i know what she does but it's not really my cup of tea <laughs> i think it's very very lovely to look at but um it's a very specific splash art style for like she used to work for riot i think with, for League of Legends, so it's like very prominent character art where where the uh, the characters like being presented in a flashy way, which which makes sense, but it's it's not really not really what I do and not really what I like either. So 
How, how did you develop your style? Did you draw differently 10 years ago? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, I think, I think, oops, sorry. <laughs> I think that a lot of, um, of style just develops because uh, you draw a lot and then time passes. It's really just a byproduct of you drawing a lot because we all have different habits of doing certain brush strokes or solving certain problems artistically. And, um, and I just read and watched a lot of things that inspired me, that made me rethink how I draw certain parts, you know, so you get like, oh, I really like how this artist draws noses. When I look at my own, I always was unhappy with how I draw noses. Maybe I should try and adjust my noses to look a little bit more like them. And that's how it starts. You copy. And then when you draw that nose for a very, 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 very long time, you don't double check whether or not it looks like the original anymore. Right. So it slowly evolves. And that's kind of what style is, because eventually it'll become your own nose style. <laughs> Um, even if it started out as a copy. So, yeah, and I think being being around art for a long time, consuming a lot of, like, just looking at art, reading stuff, playing video games, all that influences you if you like it or not. And um, and it just results in you changing your style slowly. And um, it's funny because a lot of young people, they are very concerned about style. So they're just like, oh, God, I need a style. I need a style. And I have to tell them again and again that style is the last thing you should be thinking about. Just hone your skill. Just focus on getting better um, and understanding, you know, light and composition and and how to, like, if you're in comics, how to tell a story effectively. Um, it's much more important than whether or not you have a style because the style happens automatically anyway so you shouldn't be thinking about it but um i think it's the culture of like uh social media and wanting to impress the public that really puts the style in in the foreground where they want to be recognized online as like this great artist when it's something that just comes over time so hmm. yeah yeah this is something that you know people tend to forget, especially at the beginning, that it does take time. You know, immediate success is not a thing. <laughs> Unless That's you're right. super lucky or, you know, of course it can happen, but it, yeah, you have to be prepared to work, work, work and hone, yeah. the, hone the skills, like you say. Yeah, that's right. I, I actually know a guy who, um, who learned how to draw in a very short time. However, um, he, he did it by drawing so much in one year that it was just insane like it was insane he drew every day for f at, at least five hours every single day for a whole year and that's the only reason he got so good however he also hurt his hand by doing that and then he couldn't draw for a long time so oh, wow. that's not advisable <laughs> you know so um so it might be technically possible, but you, you got to pace yourself. And, and I think um, another important thing to know is that um, everybody also uh, progresses as a, at a different rate. So some people might be able to pick it up really easily. Um, you shouldn't feel bad if you're not that talented or whatever, because um, it's just that maybe your strengths lie elsewhere and you will just pick up a different topic much easier or things like that. You know, you shouldn't you should never, ever put yourself down because you compared yourself to somebody else. Um, that's that's another one I see among very young fans that they they get very discouraged by other people being good. And it's like, no, they're just they've just been doing it longer than you. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. You know. Was there yeah, something you have you have done in your early career that you thought was really good and then afterwards you thought it was not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think my first couple of books were pretty terrible. <laughs> yeah. But um I think every every artist that um that evolves um and grows has that. I think there's there's not a single artist who who ends up being a professional um who 
who looks back and and says wow it's all great like that doesn't exist i think <laughs> i think everybody says no oh horrible please put that away <laughs> And do you generally create books or is it like posters or? Um, yes, yeah, so mainly books, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I draw mostly stories. Um, I've been focusing on it more recently just because of uh, certain circumstances. I, I, I was published in, in Germany with Tokyo Pop as well um, and also a couple of indie publishers, but I ended up like I decided that doing it myself was just as good. Um, I do create merchandise of these books as well. So like I do have posters, but they're generally connected to a book of sorts um, just because it's 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 easier for people to sort of recognize them. And like it's much harder to sell a picture of a pretty girl versus a picture of a pretty girl who's also in a book that you've read. You know, that is really cool, right? <laughs> so um, so I think, uh, like, people like Sakimi-chan can draw amazing posters and people are going to buy it because it looks cool. Um, uh, I wouldn't put myself in the same category. Um, I would say that the books are definitely my, my biggest strength. Have you ever turned the book into a film? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> Maybe one day I do. I do uh, like my one of my secret dreams. Really, is um, is having one of my my books turned into a film, and it's it would probably be a bit of an indie film because it's a uh, it's it's like a LGBT sort of topic, and it's kind of strange. I don't think it's mainstream worthy, <laughs> but it's it's a topic that's very close to my heart, I suppose. Um, so my there's a manga called Crash and Burn, which I made, um, uh, which has been like self-published in English recently. Um, it's also on my website for free. You can read it for free, and it's it's like a it's like a story of of musicians. I mentioned it earlier, the the punk rock and metal story, and it's not just music, but it's really about being a creative person and trying to to make it as such while battling with personal issues. And I feel like mm. It would work as a film, but I mean, I'm biased, obviously. <laughs> what keeps you away from doing the film? Well, I guess I'm, I'm, I have so many stories um, that I don't really have the time to investigate what directors would be interested. And then I also don't have any connections into the film industry. <laughs> so... So if any of you know anyone, please let me know, because I don't know anybody yet. <laughs> Mikiko.art. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tim just posted a link. <laughs> okay. Akin is asking for a link to your Behance. Uh, I don't think I have it. Do I? I might mm. have. Mm. <laughs> Not necessarily. No. I don't think I have one. I might I might have had like I might have made an account ages ago and then never done anything with it. Um I think it's much better to go to my website. <laughs> there's because there's my email linked and if you prefer Twitter or over Instagram or whatever, you can also contact me or over multiple avenues. Not there's just so many platforms, it's impossible to keep all of them up to date, yeah. is it? Yeah. There is an email link too, so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. How long did it take you to um, prepare this? Uh, this drawing in particular? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, oh, it's not very long. I think uh, it took me maybe an hour for the inks, maybe an hour for the sketches. So I suppose maybe two and a half hours in total. So this is like one of the easiest kind of drawings because the style is simple the, the setup is simple it's line colors uh sketch line colors shadow highlights and so we're at the shadow uh, stage right now and then the next is highlights and so i had finished everything but shadow and highlights and i think it was about maybe three hours because i wasn't rushing it um yeah so roughly <laughs> so is this your usual um 
step guideline until you say now it's finished or when do you say now it's finished? Um, it, it really depends on how busy I am and how perfectionistic I feel. So today it's quite comfortable and as long as we have time I'll probably just waffle around and you know draw comfortably <laughs> no rush um if i've like if i've got the more time i have the more i just detail things so um for example the setup on oops no not this one on this one is very similar um so it's also sketch inks base colors and then the only added step in between is i, I you can see here that there's some trend, like soft shading here right here as well you, you can see a bit of shading over here the color is different on the lips and like there's some hair stubble here so these are all the the extra steps i added and then then i did the shadows which is like these really strong shadows and then i did the highlights which is uh the lips or the eyes and the backlighting here and there and then i did a lot of paint overs so so any sort of things that look unpolished i would paint over a little bit more so it's it's really just the the base structure always stays the same but i just add more or just detail more or just uh you know polish it a little bit extra <laughs> like you know or i go back and say okay i don't like that very much and just edit it some more some some lighting effects here um some fancier gradients and so on so um it really is the same steps for everything and even even these ones i attempt to keep it similar because i'm i'm not a concept artist because i know that some concept artists are pretty impressive they just paint on one layer i can't really do that because i'm i'm not that type of artist <laughs> so i do the same i do the, the sketch the ink the colors and then the thing that with these pieces that changes is that i then do paint overs and so I, that's like the concept art part except i do it at the very end and then that's when i start painting over everything i've already drawn and just realize that it's all wrong <laughs> and then i have to fiddle around for ages and ages and ages until it's right right um, so that's kind of how i do it too like i've tried many of the methods that concept artists um uh recommend like gray scaling first and then coloring later can't do it i just it doesn't it just doesn't work for me <laughs> um so this is just the most comfortable way it was the same for this and it was quite difficult because of it and that's why it takes so long for me i think because it's not my usual work method but i have to make do somehow and then hope that it works out you know so yeah don't don't be um don't be afraid of experimenting and also don't think that this is the way to do it because i think every artist does it slightly differently anyway so there's no definite way of doing things it's like whatever works for you should be the method to use angus is asking can you recommend a resource for complete beginners a resource for complete beginners um it depends what you need so if you if you mean comics I have the best resource for you, which is uh, Scott McLeod's Understanding Comics, because it tells you why comics are the way they are and what makes them interesting, like what, what your brain does as you read them. Because if you understand what comics do, then you can draw them better as well. Um, it's less about technical skill and more about how to think when you create a comic book and what you decide to show in a story. Um, so I think that one's very interesting. If you're more into coloring and like painting, I would recommend, um, oh, I always forget the name. Um, there is, is it Steve Gurney? Is it Stephen Gurney? It's Gurney for sure. And he's got the, the book called Color and Light, which has, um, has opened my eyes about color so if you're into like if you struggle with color like i do i still i still struggle with color um that is like the best book for you um it's hard to it's 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 reading material obviously it's like it's you have james, to learn it james gurney it's james i always say steve and it's always wrong so it's james <laughs> gurney color and light there we go thank you <laughs> yes tim, tim put that in the chat 
Excellent. He's very, yeah, he's got the eagle eye and knows everything. Thank he's like you. my my Wikipedia in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and for figure drawing, I think there's a website called, I think, 30 Second Drawings, um, which helps you practice drawing shapes and figures within 30 seconds. Um, and I think you can, oops, wrong layer. And I think you can adjust it to shorter times or longer times, depending on how you feel. And that is really good for just posing and at, uh, anatomy in general, um, just being good at drawing quickly and loosely. Um, so those probably are the three things I can highly recommend. So Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, um, Color and Light by James Gurney, and 30 Second Drawings Online for figure drawing practice. Uh, where you just, sh I would say, like, if if you're really serious about this, you should try maybe once once a day during the work week or so, just once a day, do like 30 second drawing, which is you have like 30 seconds to draw a pose, so you just scribble the pose, and then it switches to the next pose, and I would do that for like a minute, and that's it. Like, just just do just do a minute first, and then see how you feel. And if you do that every day, you'll get better. Like. You know, you get better at it, um, and it's not too much work. You know, it's like it's just thirty seconds. If you do, if you do, if you do one minute, two of those. That's not. You can do it. Mm. You can do two, <laughs> and you'll find that after a while, it gets fun and addictive as well. Like you just start drawing more. <laughs> I just need a quick sip from my water. I have one more question. Um, what is the difference between Japanese manga, as you had in your childhood? and the manga that you are drawing? Um, I think the big difference between these things is that I have had a, um, um, I've had quite a lot of influences, um, which are not Japanese. So I noticed that it feels very different what I do because um, it has outside influences, I suppose. Which isn't bad. I'm, I mean, it's just part of who you are. So I find that a big part of style is just like your own personal, I don't know, spice, I guess. And um, and it's just because of my my life history, I suppose, like just moving around and seeing the world. There was no way it was going to be purely Japanese because I just didn't grow up in that society. You know, there was no way. Um, I've had a lot of a lot of um, teachers that were not Japanese, you know, that just had uh, interesting techniques um, that came from cartoons. Um, uh, like I I'm trying to think of some some examples. Like for example, Disney. Disney is a great example because it's everybody knows Disney, and everybody's watched Disney films, and it has influenced a lot of people, right? And so there's just some elements that are different. Right. Essentially, Disney's proportions of characters is still manga. They have huge eyes, they have tiny mouths and noses, and yet it's not manga, right? And like if you ask somebody what makes manga, you'd say, Oh, big eyes, small noses. Well, that's not mm. the case. So <laughs> it's it's very subtle, like the difference. So it's very hard to tell why. I've had Japanese people tell me this is not manga. I've had Westerners tell me it's not it's not comic so i'm like what is it yeah at some point you just stop caring what it is and just go well it's just me isn't it and that's fine you know and um, what, what is the difference between manga and comic uh, i mean i would argue that it's maybe if you if you read that book that i recommended <laughs> it would be um a style of storytelling is different so uh so in comics there's a lot more of um a happens then b happens and then c happens And in, in manga, it's a lot of A happens while B is happening, C is starting to happen as well. So it's like a lot of like you have a panel where things are happening sim simultaneously. Um, like the the perception of time is different in a manga. That's what I think. It sounds really weird, but if you read the book. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it has a lot to do with the fact that paneling is different. So in Western comics, you read from from left to right in an order from top to bottom like that. In in Japan, you read from top to bottom, 
from right to left so you have different space like you you don't like you don't see multiple strips of horizontal panels you see space like you run out of space much easy more easily so you you work with panels differently to make it fit and therefore i think the the perception of time and reality while you read a manga is totally different from the western one and um in in japanese manga just means comic anyway so it's just the style of storytelling in my opinion and how it looks doesn't actually matter a lot of people think it's the eyes and all that but i disagree because <laughs> again because disney has the same aesthetic yeah interesting we have pretty much come up to time haven't we rufus yes we have uh, and i'm okay. always sad yeah <laughs> this time has come yeah all um, right i'm just gonna finish up a tiny bit hmm. here and well, we're almost, I'm almost done too. So I'll just add the little bit of highlights, a little bit sloppy, but hey, I can say I was done for once. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Mikiko. That was really great to have you uh, with us today and thank you. always inspiring. <laughs> it, I really thank love you your for style. So many and, 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 and all the, all the different things you make, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really great to see. And I hope that was inspiring for the chat. I hope um, that it was an interesting stream for the community. We're streaming UK artists uh, every day from noon to one um, uh, UK time, of course. And uh, yeah, today we'll roll with Mikiko. And tomorrow we have Andrew Dobby from Made Brave. And uh, he's going to be talking about you know, how he created his company, how uh, his design studio, and how, you know, how he keeps creative during these challenging times. And uh, maybe you have one last thing you want to tell the community, Mikiko, about remaining creative during these weird times that we're living through. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess like I noticed that because I don't have to go, well, I can't go out to do certain things. I noticed that I have a lot more time on my hands and I've been really, really happy that I got a lot done. So, um, but I also noticed that a lot of people are upset that despite that, they can't. And I think I want to tell them that it's okay. Like it's perfectly fine. Things are crazy right now. It's totally fine to feel crazy and not motivated and all that too. So just like, even if you're just watching this and you feel guilty, don't, you're soaking up knowledge, right? You're soaking up knowledge and, and you're safe. And that's all that matters, I suppose. And uh, yeah. And I want to thank everybody for all these wonderful questions because I really like, I really like answering them and I hope I could help. <laughs> Stephanie? Yeah, definitely. It was really a pleasure to have you in our stream and uh, thanks to the community being so active in the chat and tuning in just after the long Easter weekend and even during uh, Good Friday and Easter Monday. And of yeah, course, thanks Rufus, it was amazing. For, <laughs> <laughs> thanks Rufus for bringing um, Adobe Live to the UK. Well, and see you tomorrow from noon to one here on behance.net slash live. Bye, Nikiko. Bye, Bye. Stephanie. Bye, community. See you tomorrow.